Hello and welcome to the Potential Psychology Podcast. I'm your host, Ellen Jackson, and it's my mission to share the science of human behaviour in a practical, fun and inspiring way. In each podcast episode, I interview an expert from the fields of psychology, well-being, leadership, parenting or high performance. I pick their brain to uncover what they know about living well, what tips do they have for you and I, and I quiz them about how they apply their expertise in their own life. Join me as we discover simple, science-backed ways to live, learn, flourish, and fulfil your potential. Hello, and welcome back to the Potential Psychology Podcast. It has been two months since our last episode, Finding Anti-Fragility in a World of Failure with Dr. Paige Williams two months since that went to air, and that is the longest we've been off the air since the podcast launched in March 2018. Wasn't the plan, wasn't the intention, but this is not the year, not the life that we're expecting, is it? 2020 has been the year of the unexpected, the year of adaptability. And I wonder if anyone had adapt as their word for the year this year. If you did, points for prescience. I did not have adapt as my word for 2020. To be honest, I can't remember what word I had or even if I had a word this year. All my plans for 2020 planning and strategy vanished in a whoosh of bushfire smoke back in early January. And really, doesn't that feel like several years ago now? To be honest, after the high drama of January and bushfire evacuation and watching our corner of Australia burn for that month or so, I I think it took me until March to find my feet again. And then, boom, COVID. But I'm not here to wade back through the challenges of 2020 and life in the midst of a global pandemic. You know how that goes. We're all living it together. What I am here today is to give you a little behind the scenes here at PPHQ as we rise and adapt to those challenges. So if adapt wasn't our word for the year at the outset of 2020, it sure is now. So let's start with the podcast, which has sat just out of view for the past few months, patiently biding its time until there was just more space, more clarity, more energy and the passion required to meet its demands because that's what it really takes and to bring it back into the spotlight. And it's it's kind of interesting actually to take a step back and observe your own energy and your attention and your ability to focus when the world's been shaken up around you. It calls forth your values and priorities and I think it really brings you back to basics. So for me, as life became mixed up and muddled up in March and April, as we faced our initial lockdown, self-care emerged as a priority, as did supporting my kids through remote school and keeping things as calm and, well, as calm as possible, I guess, on the home front. Client needs were also high on the list for me, as many of them sought support and assistance for work teams. So there was plenty of webinars on resilience and adapting to change and keeping well in stressful times. And the combination of all those things really dominated my attention and energy. It's where I had to focus myself to get through. Then after the rush of that chaos and responding to rapid change initially, I think I, like most people, began to look ahead and just to wonder what the future held So I know I asked myself what I thought I could handle in terms of workload and uncertainty and the stresses that would come from all of that. And it was in that period, probably May sometime, of what I'm calling COVID reflection, that an opportunity crossed my path that has actually changed our direction here a little at Potential Psychology and opened up a whole new world of possibility for me personally and professionally that I know is going to lead to great things that we can bring to you, the PP community. So the opportunity for me was to take on the program lead role for the Leadership Ballarat and Western Region Community Leadership Program. So if you've never heard of a regional community leadership program, and I hadn't, there are nine of them here in Victoria covering all regions of the state. And there's also metro-based community leadership programs, and I believe similar programs exist in other parts of Australia. And the goal of a regional community leadership program is to deliver a year-long 
personal and professional development program that facilitates the emergence of local leaders and strengthens community leadership capabilities and connects our community leaders with regional development initiatives. So they're quite busy, quite complex programs to deliver. They usually combine self-development activities with community-based applied projects, on-site visits, usually, but COVID's kind of put paid to that in 2020, to community organisations and businesses and institutions such as schools and correctional facilities and local and state and federal government interaction, exposure to thought leaders across a range of domains, and of course, some education in leadership skills and capabilities. So it's quite a big job. And I'm very fortunate to be developing and delivering that program here in Ballarat for our region with the support of the small but very powerful team at Committee for Ballarat, which is the not-for-profit that employs me in this role. So I started on the 1st of July. It's a a three-day-a-week gig and it is absolutely a joy because it really does encompass everything that potential psychology stands for. So helping individuals to become their best selves for the betterment of their workplaces and teams and the wider community And of course, the flow on effects to families and other systems within which we all operate. And as the lovely Andrea Downey, past guest of the show, put it, it is the perfect opportunity to create whole systems growth, which is one of the goals of potential psychology. So that has been keeping me busy for the past couple of months and will continue to do so. But in parallel, potential psychology is also growing. We have added a new team member, Sherry, who is our tech administration and process master. Jay is now freed up to focus her full attention as our content producer. So that includes the podcast, the blog and social media. And of course, continues as the genius behind our audio editing and engineering. And we have partnered over the last few months with an online business manager or organisation of online business managers called Your Online Team uh, to get a whole lot of behind the scenes processes and systems set up and organised and just running smoothly with the intention of not only allowing me the time and space to balance my two roles, well, I suppose three really, when you include my role as mother and partner, which I guess you really should, but also to be the creative force behind what content and programs and guests and services we deliver to you as our community, because that's the bit I most love to do. And as you'd no doubt appreciate, there's a whole lot of ongoing learning that I need to do to stay at the forefront of the science of wellbeing in order to bring all of that to you. So we're getting super organised, we're growing, we're improving our systems and processes. There's just an awful lot going on, an awful lot of activity really that has transpired behind the scenes during this global pandemic. And I keep saying pandemic, don't I? Pandemic. (laughs) And it's led to two primary projects for potential psychology that you're going to see evolve and take shape over the next few months. The first of this is, of course, this podcast back on the air with new guests and new interviews in a far more regular manner than we've managed over the past few months. So new episodes will hit the airwaves or digital waves, I guess, every two weeks from here on in, which is really exciting. In our next episode, I'm speaking to Dr. Patricia Zurita-Ona, who is a California-based clinical psychologist about facing your fears and learning to grow. And we're going to be exploring perfectionism and overthinking and high expectations and why we get stuck sometimes and importantly, how to get unstuck. So that's our first new cab off the rank. And my next conversation after that will be with Dr. Sarah Mackay, Oxford educated neuroscientist and past guest of the show. We're going to be busting some myths about lizard brains and exploring emotions and how they emerge in the mind rather than sitting in a specific spot in the brain. So it's some really cutting edge neuroscience, which is very exciting. In later episodes, I'll be talking about physical intelligence, the science of thinking without thinking with another neuroscientist and neurologist and author, Dr. Scott Grafton. And in October, I'll be exploring topics like mood and food, what we know about walking and well-being, and we're going to get a little deep into anger. Now, of course, if you have topics that you'd really like us to cover, please let us know. We've added a link in the show notes to this episode for exactly that purpose. We're always keen to hear what you're most enjoying or perhaps help to solve any problems that you might be battling at the moment. So, 
head on over to the show notes, find that link or use social media or any other way. There's my email addresses available on the website too. So try any of those. Feel free to shoot us a message. So that's the first project that we're working on. And then the second is the Potential Psychology Self-Care Club, which is our membership-based program that I kicked off in March to help us explore and invest in the self-care that we've all needed as 2020 continues. And that project is evolving and transforming to become a really fully integrated self-care platform form that allows our members to deep dive into every facet of well-being and thriving and flourishing from how we manage our mind to our strengths and values and purpose to physical well-being, understanding your emotions, connection and relationships and achieving your goals and peak productivity balanced of course with good mental health. So it's really exciting to see it taking shape behind the scenes and we will be launching it in its new fully evolved form later this year. It's going to be pitched particularly at employers and workplaces because we know that when we're functioning as our best selves, we're really better leaders, better managers, better colleagues, better partners, better parents and better friends and all of those pieces are wrapped up together to create better workplaces and better communities. So I think that's it. I think we're all caught up. I hope you're doing okay. I'm conscious, having gone through all of that stuff, that it's a lot and it sounds like I've been totally on top of things and that is so far from the truth. There has been a lot of stress, a lot of self-care, some very unproductive periods, some tears, a household like many of high emotion, probably too much technology and not enough physical activity and several of us existing largely on the contents of what we call the snack cupboard, which includes crackers and two-minute noodles and a lot of toast. So if you're feeling like your life's a bit chaotic and unstructured and out of whack and you don't know what day it is or what comes next or you've binged Lucifer and Community on Netflix instead of exercising and cooking nutritious meals like me, just know that you're not alone. If adapt is the word for 2020, that is all part of the process. Adapting requires loss and letting go and trying new things and a lot of patience and a lot of acceptance and a lot of self-compassion. So let's just adapt together, shall we? I'm going to be back with our next episode of the show in two weeks' time. In the meantime, if you missed them, you might like to catch up on some of our recent past episodes in which I discuss self-care with psychologist and yoga teacher Susie Redding and Adapting to Change with educational psychologist Professor Andrew Martin. Both episodes explore how we can best cope with some of the challenges of this year. And you can also find out more about community leadership programs and the Potential Psychology Self-Care Club in the show notes for this episode. And then over on social media, Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn, we're running a series of lockdown life tips to help you come to grips with some of the bigger and more complex psychological aspects of living through a global pandemic. These are topics like ambiguous loss and what's known as surge capacity and adjusting to a new normal that involves indefinite uncertainty. So to find out more about all of that, you'll have to pop over and take a look at our social accounts and the links are in the show notes for that too. I'm really looking forward to being back with our interviews in a couple of weeks' time. Thank you for indulging me with this update. Until we're back, go well, be safe and take small steps to fulfil your potential. (laughs) 